Okay, intermittent and normal operating temperatures. When we talk about the ability for oil to function and do its job, one of the things that all lubrication engineers will tell you is the number one critical, most important factor in lubricating something is to have the correct viscosity or thickness of oil for the application you put it in. Now, there's all kinds of different ways that that's calculated by on the clearances between the moving parts, on the speed of the rotation of the two moving parts and, uh, with reference to each other. There's all kinds of formulas for that. But let's just say the design engineer is pretty sharp and he gets the idea that I want a 30 weight oil in this system to give me the correct lubrication in all of these moving parts. All right? Now, so the question is, do I have 30 weight there? And if I'm between, let's say, 40 degrees and 230 degrees with Amsoil Synthetic, I've got a 30 weight oil. Okay? Now, the question is, when do I reach a temperature at which my oil cannot maintain the viscosity it's rated? The normal operating band would be that it's always, always in that band of viscosity that's required to operate at. So as I heat this oil up, what we find is they're tested, they're all tested at 210 degrees. Now that's where the operational viscosity is measured. If I say I have a 30 weight oil, it's measured at 210 degrees, and then it's also measured on the lower end, but on the lower end it varies depending upon what the winter rating is, 5W, 10W, 20W, 0W. It's going to be measured at a different temperature and have to flow in a certain way or respond in a certain way to get that rating, but they're all tested at 210 degrees for the upper operational temperature range, okay? Now, so if I've got a 30 weight oil at 210 degrees, when will it become, go out low? When will it go out of the 30 weight range? Now, they use this little thing they call an intermittent band, meaning that if I go into this temperature range intermittently, I can still, this oil will still perform its job and I can get by with it, but it's not as good but if I only stay there for a short period of time, I'll be okay. That's called the intermittent range. So, when I measure an oil, let's say a 30 weight oil, a standard petroleum 30 weight oil at 210 degrees, will have about a 30 degree band, meaning it'll go to about 240 degrees, that 30 weight oil, and at that point, it is now moving out of its rated viscosity. So at about 240 degrees, I'm going into the intermittent band. That intermittent band is good to about maybe 270 degrees, about another 30 degrees. And that's it for that 30 weight oil. If I go above 270 degrees in that petroleum 30 weight oil, I am now in the danger zone. It is becoming vapor, maybe smoke, but just a vapor, let's say. And vapor, like foam, doesn't lubricate. So now what I'm depending on is wherever the zinc and phosphorus was to prevent steel to steel contact, wherever that stuff is, the oil film's gone. So I just got this, whatever's left is the chemicals that was in it, or the additives. So normal range, everything's good. I've got fluid, laminated fluid, no problem. Intermittent range, I've still got my lubrication regime in place. I'm depending some on the additives. I've still got some. I go out of the intermittent range, it's over. I have no, no oil film, I'm in trouble. So. When you go to a synthetic oil, like AMS oil, okay, the ranges are highly extended. AMS oil will be a 30 weight oil above 300 degrees. It'll go to about maybe three, depending upon the type, which one of the ones, anywhere from 310 to 340 degrees and still be a 30 weight oil. So it means you haven't pushed it out of its normal operating band. Its intermittent oper operating band is good to 450 degrees. And if you go above 450, well, you're on your own, okay? Uh, things might not be good. But if you're above 450 degrees, what you really need to do is get out the fire extinguisher because something is burning. You know, all the rubber components on the engine, everything is already on fire, and you're standing on the roadside thinking about what you're gonna get out of the insurance and get a new car, okay? so. What this really tells you is that through whatever you really would expect in an automobile, 
This fully synthetic PAO based AMS oil, that's our original oil, they're going to provide you protection just about to the point to where the engine's on fire. Okay, the intermittent range is up to 450 degrees. The operating stain of 30 weight oil up to over 300 degrees. You, you just, you're not going to harm the engine because of high temperature if you're running a good synthetic engine oil like Amsoil. And give them credit, Mobile uses the same base stock. Now, there's a difference between the XL Amsoil with high temperature and the PAO oils. The XL oils will be good, but they will not have near the temperature tolerance of the PAO oils. They're going to be good probably above the standard petroleums. You can probably get the up to maybe uh, 200 and add another 25 degrees onto the petroleum oil that you're comparing it to for normal operating band and intermittent operating band. Those are pure base oils but they're still really natural hydrocarbons that are pure base. The PAOs on the other hand are engineered molecular structures that are made and they can handle temperature. Now, that's important to know because when you get into transmission fluids, there are some of the Hydrocrack Group 3 transmission fluids out there. Uh, they have this bad tendency in the world of, of oils to run along pretty good and reach about the end of life and it's like fall off of this table. They just go away overnight almost. Whereas the PAO oils, you get a long life and they're just barely degrading over a real long life. So people like Kat, um, uh, Allison, they have specified PAO synthetic as the only allowable transmission fluid if you're going to use synthetic in an Allison transmission. They did that on purpose, okay, because they understand the difference between the PAO and petroleum or hydrocrack. So it is something to understand. We're talking about temperature tolerance. Take, for example, Amsoil's 20W50 or now 1550 racing oil, okay? They're racing oil, all right? The intermittent operating range on the 50 weight racing oil is 550 <coughs> degrees. It's not likely that that race car is going to get the engine over 550 degrees. If it does, again, this, the, got everybody out there with the big truck with the fire extinguisher, you know, and uh, the crowd's clapping because the guy's okay. Um, the diesel oils, where it's important with them, and even in gas, is in the turbocharger. Turbochargers can intermittently raise the temperature of oil above 500 degrees on a regular basis. So what do you want going in there intermittent at 500 degrees? The oil that says at 500 degrees that it's smoke or the oil that says at 500 degrees we're still in my limited uh, upper intermittent operating band. And due to the short time you get through there, it's okay. Gets through, comes out. Gets through, comes out. What happens with petroleum oil in Turbochargers, they try to intercool them, they try to do all kinds of things, but the turbocharger just gets hot. And if everybody understands that, it's because it's, it's taking its energy off of the exhaust. So the exhaust is turning one wheel, and the other side wheel that's grabbing the air is being turned. Two turbine wheels, one working off the exhaust, one grabbing, jamming air to shove it in. So the one on the exhaust side, that's why they have on the, uh, on the diesels, they'll have exhaust, gas, temperature, uh, ranges that you can't go above, but we're talking about what, 1200 degrees? 1250. 1250. That's hot. And that's on one side of this turbo. Well, you got a bearing that has to support this thing. You got two bearings. And so they're going to be subjected to a lot of heat. So you want the oil coming through to be pumped fast and you want it to be a very high quality oil. The worst thing happens with the cheap oil is it keeps going through there, but it's leaving just a little bit of varnish as it's going through and then it starts to restrict the flow and if it restricts the flow now it even gets hotter and pretty soon it turns to hard carbon coke and if that stuff breaks loose and goes into the turbo yeah yeah this is this is really crack cocaine man I'm telling you, this is crack coke if this stuff breaks loose and goes into the turbo blades it'll just tear them apart it's uh, it's really harder than steel so so oil in high temperature it's our one of our selling points don't hesitate to talk about the superiority of a good, especially the PAO synthetics, our 0W30 and 0W20. How in the world can we get away with this 20 weight oil in these high performance cars? Because now they run a lot of these cars at 205 degrees, right? Thermostat temperature, 205 degrees. Well, 205 degrees, if I use my rule of thumb, 35 degrees for a normal operating engine, I'm at 240 degrees in a 20 weight oil. Guess what? That's the start of the intermittent range on a 20 weight oil. So what does that mean? I'm going to run around in the intermittent range on petroleum oil in my 
my 20 weight oil in my car all the time, it's going to be in the intermittent range. That what the intermittent range means you have accelerated oxidation and higher volatility it means that you're you're boiling off oil and it's oxidizing, so it's getting thicker, and and now it's going to start to gum up. So the point is, if a person wants to run a 20 weight oil, for God's sakes, just tell them we have a zero W20. It's the best 20 weight oil in the marketplace. It's made out of the PAO and ester base, just like our zero W30. And this oil will protect your engine as a 20 weight oil. Don't take a chance. On, on petroleum in particular. Now our 5W20 has proven to be a very good product for the 7500 miles that it runs. But if I had a car that took a 20 weight oil, I wouldn't spend one nanosecond thinking about which one between those two oils I would use. I would use a 0W20. It's a much superior oil.